Hello, good morning, our dear viewers. Good morning, our dear viewers. You are highly welcome to this other lesson of ours involving buffer solutions. But for this case, we are going to look at calculations that involve basic buffers. Remember, I would love that uh, before uh, we proceed, let's first subscribe to this channel so that we have the best of ourselves. Now, uh, here is a question. Determine the pH of a solution made by dissolving 25 cubic centimeters of 0.2 molar nitric acid or nitric acid to 80 cubic centimeters of 0.2 molar ammonia solution. They have given us a PKB. This is the base dissociation constant of ammonia as 4.74. Uh, now, we looked at the Henderson Hazelbach equation for, uh, for acid buffers. Uh, and now we shall just change something small and uh, we get, uh, we, oh, we derive an equation for the, <clears throat> for the basic uh, buffers. Now, at this question, we are given 0.2 mole nitric acid, but in 25 cubic centimeters. You're given 0 0.2 molar here of uh, ammonia in 80. How do we know that this is a basic buffer? You come to know that this is a basic buffer when you're having a strong acid and a weak base, meaning we have a weak, uh, a, a, um, a buffer will be as a result of a weak base and the sort of a strong acid. So. This is very, 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 very interesting. So, uh, meaning ammonia solution and ammonia nitrate, because from nitric acid, we get uh, a nitrate. So the base will be ammonia solution and the salt or the salt of the base will be ammonium nitrate as the salt is derived from uh, a strong acid. So here, since we are given moles in the, uh, in a thousand cubic centimeters, we need to first get moles in these volumes. Here you're given moles in a thousand, so you can get moles in 25. You're given moles in a thousand, so you can get moles in 80. So allow me begin by saying that uh, moles of uh, moles of nitric acid. We shall first get moles of nitric acid. And to get moles of nitric acid, we shall get. 0 0.2 times 25 out of 1000. So this will, uh, this will give us 0 0.05 moles. From there, we get moles of ammonia solution. Moles of ammonia solution will be equal to a 0 0.2 times 80 out of 1,000. And this will give us 0 0.016 moles. Now, then we have to write the equation for the reaction between ammonia solution The equation for the reaction between ammonia solution and nitric acid. And this will give us ammonium nitrate. So after getting ammonium nitrate, you can see that the mole reaction ratio for all is one to one to one. Now, mole reaction ratio uh, more reaction ratio of uh, ammonia to nitric acid again to ammonium nitrate formed is equals to one to one to one. Now, 
Then here, it means that moles of ammonia that reacted are equal to moles of nitric acid that reacted, which are also equal to moles of ammonium nitrate that reacted. So allow me to say that moles of uh, ammonia are uh, equal to moles of nitric acid, which are also equal to moles of the ammonium nitrate that is formed, all right? And which is equal to 0 0.0 uh, 5 moles. Now, after getting moles of ammonium nitrate formed, it means that there are, are excess moles, all right, of ammonia that did not react. So let's get excess moles. Excess moles of ammonia solution. And this would be equaling to, uh, to get excess moles, we shall get the ones of ammonia we subtract 0 0.016 minus 0 0.05. Uh, excess moles are 0 0.011 moles. So after getting moles, all the excess moles, all right, uh, these excess moles that reacted. Uh, sorry, the excess moles of ammonia, those are the moles that did not react, and the ammonium nitrate formed all together form what you call a basic buffer. So we need to note, we need to note that maybe uh, excess moles of ammonia solution, all right, and excess ammonia solution and uh, ammonium nitrate that was formed all together constitute or form A basic buffer. If that is the case, remember ammonia was added to nitric acid, or you added the nitric acid to ammonia, then what would be the total volume of the solution? So we need to have the total volume of the solution. And the total volume of the solution would be equaling to the volume of nitric acid plus volume of ammonia. And that one in total will give us 105 cubic centimeters. Now, if you have 105 cubic centimeters, it means that these cubic centimeters or this volume contains the moles of ammonia. Remember, excess ammonia and the ammonium nitrate are the ones which constitute a buffer, meaning that excess moles of ammonia are the ones we shall use to get the concentration of ammonia that was used in that case. Then the moles of uh, ammonium nitrate are these ones here, but this volume, since they constitute, or since they constituted a buffer, the, the same volume of the solution is the volume that we are going to use here and here. So now, allow me to say that 105 cubic centimeters of the solution contain 0 0.011 moles of ammonia.
If that is the case, then what about a thousand cubic centimeters of this solution will contain 0 0.011 times 1000, everything over 105 moles. This one here will give me the moles of ammonia in 1000 cubic centimeters. And uh, that one will give me um, 0 over 105, it will give me 0 0.1. 048 molar. Now, this is the concentration of ammonia in a buffer solution. Then still the same volume of the solution, 105 to be centimeters of the solution contain 0 0.05 moles of ammonium nitrate, our salt formed. Because here we saw that moles of ammonium nitrate are 0 0.05. So if that is the case, if that is the case, what about a thousand cubic centimeters? So a thousand cubic centimeters of the solution will contain 0 0.05 times 1,000 out of 105 moles. So this one here will give me my concentration of ammonium nitrate as it's 50, 0 0.0476 molar. Now that is where I am. Implying that I am having my concentration of my aqueous ammonia, or uh, this one, one can call it ammonia hydroxide, as 0 0.1048, and I'm having my concentration of ammonium nitrate as 0 0.0476. Now, after having gotten these concentrations, I can bring in the aspect of the anderson asselbach equation, I substitute and I get my pH. How do, why do that? Allow me rub off this members. So when it is at best, we don't get pH direct, but we get POH, POH. With a base, we are looking at hydroxide. But when it was an acidic buffer, we get pH direct because uh, by mere saying acidic, it means that there is hydrogen ions already, and therefore the formula begins with pH. But with the base, we get pOH, which is equals to pKB, not as, a, not as the, the other basic buffer. For basic buffer, we are saying pH is equals to pKA because it is the acid dissociating. But in this case, it is the base that dissociates, as we saw the action of our basic buffer in the previous videos. So it is pKB plus logarithm of cost base 10 of ammonium nitrate, which is our salt, over ammonia solution, which is our base. So, uh, in simple terms, one can see that POH is equals to PKB plus logarithm of a sort concentration of a base. But from our previous steps, we saw that the concentration of ammonium nitrate was equaling to 0 0.0476 molar. And we saw that the concentration of uh, 
ammonia solution was equaling to 0 0.1048 molar. And they gave us our K PKB direct, PKB as 4.74. What would it imply? It would imply that our POH is equals to PKB. If it is PKB, you write it the way it is, 4.74. But if they gave you KB now, to get PKB, you would take the logarith negative logarithm of base 10 of that value of KB. But the fact that they have given it direct, then it's substituted the way it is. Plus, logarithm, concentration of the salt or ammonium nitrate, which we have as 0 0.0476. Out of zero point one zero four eight, so this is the same as four point seventy four plus the logarithm of this. When you take the logarithm of this, you get negative zero point three four three, and this one will give you a POH as four point three. Nine seven. This is my POH. But the question is pH. But we know that POH plus pH is equals to 14 from our pH scale. So if POH plus pH is equals to 14, this is derived. This is derived. And uh, uh, we shall cover the we shall cover most of these things, so don't you worry. But let's apply it now for now. POH plus pH is equal to 14, implying that our pH is equal to 14 minus POH. So this would be 14 minus 4.394. So our pH will be uh, 9.6, as simple as that. So that is how the question would be done. Let me do another second example so that, uh, so that we harmonize our understanding very well here. Um, Example number two reads 0 0.02 moles of ammonium chloride were dissolved in 1.0 decimeters cubed of 0 0.1 molar ammonia solution. Calculate the A pH before addition of the salt and B pH after addition of the salt, pH after addition of the salt. Um, we are going to take an assumption. Actually, this is a constant, KB. For ammonia is equals to 1.8 times 10 power negative five decimeters cubed solution 
Now, this question sounds very easy, and indeed it is very easy. 0 0.02 moles of ammonium chloride were dissolved in one decimeter cubed. What does it mean? These are moles per decimeter cubed, right? Of 0 0.1 molar ammonia solution. Now, we have two concentrations given. We are having the concentration of ammonium chloride. This one will give us the concentration of ammonium chloride as 0 0.02. And here uh, we have the concentration of ammonia solution. So we know that from ionization of ammonia, We have our ammonia solution plus water. This ionizes partially to form ammonium ion. All right, plus the hydroxide ions. All right. Now, this one will give us the expression for Kb. KB, <clears throat> remember they want before addition of the salt, which salt? Ammonium chloride. Remember, ammonium chloride and ammonia constitute a buffer. So before addition of ammonium chloride, the salt, we, we just add ammonia. Now it means that the KB will be equal to the concentration of ammonium ions, all right? Times the concentration of hydroxide ions, that is the ions in the, pro in the product, out of concentration of ammonia solution. But we have to take an assumption that at equilibrium, the concentration of ammonium ion, because we do not need to talk about ammonium ion, we have not yet added the salt. So the concentration of ammonium ion. Uh, is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion, implying that, uh, implying that our formula, our formula can be changed now, right? Our formula can be changed. We can say that Kb is equal to hydroxide squared out of why hydroxide? Because they are equal, meaning this is times two. So out of the concentration of ammonia, which concentration of ammonia is, let me keep it the way it is, then I substitute later. So what does it mean? It means that to get the concentration of hydroxide ion, if you cross my plate, it will be Kb, times the concentration of ammonia. Now, um, it means that the OH concentration will be equaling to the square root because here it, is, here it is squared, so we take the square root. Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the power negative five times the concentration of ammonia which is zero point um, zero point here it is supposed to be zero point zero one. Uh, this is in the question in my answer is zero point zero one. Let's consider it as zero point zero one. And here we shall end up getting our OH concentration as 4.24 times 10 to the power negative four molar. But with hydroxide concentration, we can get the POH. So the POH is equal to negative logarithm to the base 10 
of the hydroxide concentration. And this one will give us uh, 3.37. That is the pH, but they needed a pH. But pH, we've seen that which is equals to 14 minus pOH. So it will be equal to 14 minus 3.37, which comes to 10. Uh, point six three. So that is the pH before addition of a base or rather of a salt. Now, part B, after adding a base, now rather after adding a salt, a base, you're adding an ammonium salt to ammonia solution. So you're constituting two, an, al an alkaline buffer or a basic buffer. Therefore there, we shall use our formula because it is already a buffer, solution so shall say poh since it is a base is equals to pkb plus logarithm to the stain of ammonium chloride which is our salt out of the concentration of ammonia solution so if we substitute here our poh first would be equaling to to get pkb it is negative logarithm to base 10 of KB. And our KB is uh, 1.8 times 10 to the power negative five plus logarithm concentration of ammonium chloride has been given as 0 0.02. So we shall have 0 0.02 out of concentration of ammonia, which is uh, 0. 0, 01. So this one will give you 4.745. The logarithm of this is a negative, and that negative is 0 0.699. And this one will give you the pOH as in, well, the pH would be 4.7. 046. Now, after getting this pH, actually, this is a pOH, so we can get pH. pH is 14 minus pOH, which will be equal to 14 minus 4.046. And this one will give us our pH as 9.95. If this is my pH, but they need the pH after adding a salt. So you have to get the pH change. pH change will be before adding. So 10.63 minus after adding 9.95. And this one will give me the pH as 0 0.68. As simple as that. So our viewers, that is how the number would be done. That is how the number would be done. I'm going to do our last question, or I'm going to do for you the last example. And then from that example, I'll leave behind a question for last practice. Then from there, we can see what next? So I'm going to put an example for all of us to practice. For all of us to practice. So we are going to first do something small. Let's do some one more example and then I give you work. So number three, which is my last example. Um, determine the mass of ammonium chloride. V 
that should be added to one decimeter cubed of 0 0.1 molar ammonia solution at 25 degrees Celsius to give a solution whose pH is 8.5. Right, so KB of ammonia is 1.8 times 10 power negative 5. Then, in the case you want to use K water or KW, it will be 1.0 times 10 to the power negative 4. Uh, units moles per decimeter cubed. The same applies moles per decimeter cubed. Uh, KW, no, it is per negative 14. And here we have moles square, decimeter power negative six. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Then, of course, from that, shall also have a part B. If a few drops of sodium hydroxide were added, to the solution in A, state what happened to the pH. State what happened to the pH of the solution. And of course, give a reason for your observation. Interestingly, uh, we have brought in some other term, but since after buffer solution, we are going to solve hydrolysis, most of these terms won't seem to, they won't seem, they won't seem funny. They'll be very, 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 very easier for you uh, to retrieve. Uh, our question needs us to determine the mass of. Uh, we need to determine the mass of ammonium chloride that should be added. The mass of ammonium chloride that should be added. Very interesting. If we are to determine the mass of sodium hydroxide, right? Um, sorry, the mass of ammonium chloride. Okay. Now. They have given us pH as 8.5 and KB and KW. Allow me to say that the pH, even POH is equal to 14, 
minus pH. And this is 14 minus pH, which is 8.5. And our pOH is 5.5. .5. So if you get pOH as 5.5, .5, all right, we need to get the concentration first of ammonium chloride. Because when ammonium chloride was added to ammonia solution, a buffer was formed. So allow me say from POH is equals to PKB, because we are dealing with the basic buffer, plus logarithm concentration of ammonium chloride out of concentration of aqueous ammonia. Substitute POH is 5.5 is equals to PKB, we, we, we were given KB. So if I need PKB to be negative logarithm to the stem of 1.8 exponent negative five, all right? Plus logarithm, concentration of ammonia, we don't know it. Rather of ammonium chloride, we don't know it. Out of concentration of ammonia itself, is given as 0 0.1, so out of 0 0.1. All right. So this one would mean that my 5.5 .5 is equals to when you evaluate this, you'll get uh, 4.745 plus uh, logarithm concentration of ammonium chloride out of 0 0.1. When you bring this on this side, when you take it away from 5.5, you're going to get, um, uh, let me say logarithm, concentration of ammonium chloride out of 0 0.1 is equals to when you subtract here, you're going to get, um, 0 0.755. Now, the fact that we are dividing logarithm numbers of the same base under the logarithm it would imply that we can subtract. So it would be logarithm to base 10 of ammonia, ammonium chloride concentration minus logarithm to base 10 of 0 0.1, this is equals to 0 0.755. What does it mean? Logarithm base 10 of ammonium chloride. When you take the logarithm of 0 0.1, you get negative one. Negative one times a negative, you get positive one is equals to 0 0.755. Implying that my logarithm base 10 of ammonium chloride is the same as, it's going to be the same as when you subtract from this side, it will be, when you subtract a one, it will be negative 0 0.245, all right? But we need concentration of ammonium chloride first. Concentration of ammonium chloride will be equaling to if I'm going to eliminate a, a logarithm, so it will be 10 exponent negative 0 0.245. And indeed, when you, when you evaluate this on a calculator, you're going to get the concentration of ammonium chloride as, when you take 10 to the power 0 point, negative 0 0.245, it is going to give you uh, the concentration of ammonium chloride as 0. Point Five, six, eight, nine. So after getting this as your ammonium chloride concentration, but the question is determining the mass of ammonium chloride. So we've gotten the concentration in moles, all right? This is the concentration in moles. So after getting the concentration, we can easily convert these moles to, to the mass. And how do we? come about that. So we look for the molar mass first. 
molar mass of ammonium chloride. Lucky enough, or your papers can be set with a periodic table. So you can easily see the atomic masses of respective elements. So for, for nitrogen, we have 14. For hydrogen, we shall have one but times four atoms. For chlorine, we shall have 35.5. And in total, this one give you 53.5 grams. So by saying molar mass, it means that this is the mass in one mole. So come and say one mole of ammonium chloride. All right, one mole of ammonium chloride weighs 53.5 grams. What about these moles? So 0 0.5689 moles will weigh 53.5 times 0 0.5689 grams. So uh, the mass required uh, will be equal to uh, 30, point uh, four, four grams. That is the mass of ammonium chloride that is uh, that should be added. Then now for part B, we want to know if you add a few drops of uh, sodium or hydroxide to the solution, what would happen to the pH? What would happen to the pH? My talk would be the pH almost remains constant or the pH remains constant. Reason, the sodium hydroxide added contains the hydroxide ions, which hydroxide ions are going to combine with the ammonium ions to produce ammonium hydroxide or to produce ammonia solution in water, keeping the pH almost constant. But let's note it and we see. When you add, when you add sodium hydroxide, the pH remains constant. Even when someone says the pH remains almost constant, you're okay. Now, why? So we need to know the reason. Right? So the reason is that the sodium hydroxide added reacted with ammonium ions to form ammonia molecules. And the water. So, in other words, I'm trying to say that ammonium ions react with the hydroxide ions added, forming ammonium hydroxide. As simple as that. So, our viewers. Thank you for listening and watching. Our next episode is going to be preparation or preparing buffers. After that, we shall go to salt hydrolysis. Then our other topic will be chemical kinetics, but we love you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, you like, share, and comment in case of any. Thank you so much.